Generación Latina, your host here, Carolina Peña. Today is the start of a new series, and I am so thrilled to bring this to you guys. We're going to focus on well-being. There are different components to well-being, and one of them that we're focusing on today is physical well-being. So when you think of physical well-being, we, most of us probably don't feel like we're really at our best, right? We think of diets we need to do, we think of going to the gym, and how we haven't done that in a long time, or ever, maybe. And yet, there's so much more to, well be, to being physically well. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. In fact, I have two really great guests that are going to tell us their story, their journey of how they went from not feeling all that well, maybe all the time, and an amazing journey they took to change the way they look, but most importantly, to change their lifestyle. So with us today is Nico and Eduardo. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us first of all a little bit about yourselves. Well, I'm Nico and I'm 17 years old. I'm an 11th grader at Langley High School and I play guitar and sing and songwrite and I want to be a performer. Very cool. Thanks, Nico. And Ed, tell me a little bit about you. Cool. Well, um, my name is Eduardo Vivasencio and uh, I actually used to teach at schools. I was born in Los Angeles, raised by uh, padres equatorianos. Um, mm -hmm. After uh, moving to Boston, the East Coast, to go to college, I went to Harvard, studied economics, but I chose to be a teacher, actually. So um, now what I do is I actually help teachers. I run a company called Envision It, and basically we do training, technology, integration, that kind of stuff for schools and nonprofits. Very cool. So I have to say, actually, it's thanks to you, Ed, who I have, you, you've completely opened up my eyes to what is well-being. And what we're focusing here today is obviously physical well-being, and I'm bringing you here because you, as one of my friends, um, you know, I've seen the transformation in your life. It's inspiring. I think that, you, and you're inspiring so many more people around you that are taking steps to change and completely transform. Um, so I want us to just give me maybe just a quick definition, like what, what is well-being for you? Uh, wow, good question. So well-being, I think in the past I used to think of well-being as just health and wellness, like, you know, feeling good, you know. Um, but now as an adult I've realized, and especially, you know, that, that for me it's a lot more than that. I mean, it's not only just like being physically fit, but also there's so many other components, you know. Um, how are you with your friends uh, financially as an adult, you know, career-wise, uh, even community. Um, and most recently I even I started reading a book about well-being and how it affects like companies. And that's actually how well-being has kind of changed for me because it's not just, oh, you know, am I going to the gym and am I eating right? Exactly. And, and it's such a tedious thing. I mean, you think about it. And you think, oh, man, like the holidays are coming and we're going to be eating so many delicious mm -hmm. things, right? It's like party after party. Um, so we kind of put it aside, all right? And we think, well, okay, we'll have our New Year's resolutions. But I think the goal here for us is to kind of step back and think, well, before we even jump into the holiday season, right, and just splurge, right, on everything we see and right. eat all those sweets, right, um, let's, let's look back and, and, I mean, let's actually look forward and see, well, how, how can we make certain decisions that are going to affect not just like this holiday season and how the pounds that you, you might add in the next few months, but as a lifestyle, right? Yep. So, um, Nico, tell me, a little bit just about kind of like your journey, right? I mean, you definitely did not look like this right. um, a few years ago, and and we're gonna we're gonna show you some pictures, some before and after pictures, right? That we yeah. all love. But tell me how tell me your, your your journey. Well, when I was younger, around elementary school and through middle school, I was always kind of chubby and didn't have a very healthy lifestyle, and I had bad habits and I'd eat unhealthy, and I would just never feel good. My nose was congested and I was just, was, you know, just gassy and just didn't, was not very healthy. And well, what did you typically eat? Um, just like a lot of processed foods, um, a lot of wheat, you know, just whenever I could have something that was good, that tasted good and was usually unhealthy, I'd have it. And so I just had bad habits like that and I, you know, would eat at bad times and, you know, just stuff like that. And then eighth grade, I moved to Hawaii and... I was living, you know, kind of unhealthy on there, but then I started learning more and more about healthy foods and natural foods, and I started drinking green smoothies, and I went to this lady who was the mom of one of my friends at the school, 
and she did an Ayurvedic pulse reading on me, which is this energetic reading, and she told me that if I stopped eating wheat and dairy, that I should, I needed to stop eating wheat and dairy, and I'd be way healthier, and I'd lose weight, and I'd feel really good. So it was hard, but I, I did. I dropped wheat and dairy, and I started drinking green smoothies every morning, and eating kale and healthy natural foods, and I lost about 45 pounds in three months and I felt amazing and I, it was just amazing and I felt really good, great and vibrant and it was awesome. Wow, so you dropped 45 pounds in three months, like you must have looked, I mean did your clothes like just drop, like fall yeah. off of you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. wow. So how did it feel, like, I mean did you, uh, w what changed about your lifestyle? Well I became, I became confident and much less self-conscious and it became once I started eating good and feeling good after I kind of got over the bad habits I started understanding what it was like to feel good too and it became easier to live healthier it was just when I felt good it wasn't hard and I didn't have to force myself to eat healthy foods it just kind of that was my lifestyle so I became like I said more confident and it was just it was just funner to live. Hmm. Ed, how did the journey go for you? Well, it's interesting hearing Nico's story reminds me that I, I guess the journey started a long time ago when I was a kid. I mean, growing up in a Latino family, you know, I was always a little chubby and, you know, you got used to being called gordito. Of course, or, I mean, you know, it's totally normal, yeah. right? And amongst all my cousins, I was always el gordito, you know, which, you know, being chubby, okay, I didn't think it was a big deal. I mean, I always was self-conscious and clothes and stuff, but I, I remember junior high, I actually weighed about 180 or 85 pounds, which is probably a lot, you know. Um, but uh, I think the journey, you know, kind of didn't really get conscious in my head until about two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, had a job where somehow I gained about 45 pounds in 18 months, mm -hmm. you know, and I kept blaming the job and, and I didn't think of it as a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but I had back problems, couldn't stand too long, and as a teacher that was really horrible, you know. So luckily I, I went to a chiropractor who, who basically helped me with my back problems and taught me a lot about strength and abs and such. And then a couple months later after the back pain had gone away, he told me about a diet principle that I thought would be interesting to, to try out. Within a couple of, of weeks and months, just like you know, Nico said, I shed about 30, 35 pounds. And then what was neat was I started coaching others on how to do it. So for me, it's been really neat because now um, I weigh under 200 pounds. And it's the first time probably since college that I've been under 200 pounds consistently. I've kept it off, which is actually the part that I was scared about the most. Is like most people can do diets. I've never done one. But the, the ability to be like, like almost two years now to the month that uh, I'll have be, been under 200 is kind of neat. What lifestyle um, differences did you notice? Because I remember, I mean, you, you know, you and I met dancing, yeah, right? Yeah, we so, met dancing. And, right. and you were a little chubby then, all yeah. right, you got to admit it. Yeah. All right, so, but now, what, like, what's different for you? So I think, first of all, we think about the, the difference of, of how I felt. I mean, I was always, I love dancing. So I always felt good dancing, and I'm a pretty decent dancer compared to the average guy. Um, so when I think about lifestyle change, I think a lot has to do internally. Um, I'm more confident now when I'm about to ask someone to dance. Um, I'm more confident not just in the dancing, it's the asking, right, but even just in the dancing itself. You know, my posture, the way I sit, and that's helped a lot actually even professionally in my business, you know. I don't feel so uncomfortable necessarily. I think that's the biggest thing. I also have a lot more energy, um, and I can do things that I never thought I would do before. Uh, one example is like racing. I am actually have done five half marathons now. And it started with just walking, and now I'm getting a little quicker, and now I'm learning a lot more about personal records and those kinds of things that real runners actually do. <laughs> so that's been kind of fun for me. Very cool. So one of the things you mentioned that I think is so key is that we often see we find a lot of reasons to not take action, right? We find reasons for why we live the way we live. And so if we think, okay, well, I would like to go to the gym, but, you know, it's kind of out of the way, or it's expensive for me, right? I can't really afford it. Um, or, you know, even joining a team, well, you know what, they're not going to accept me. I mean, I, I'm a little overweight. There's other people that are going to get in. So what are, what are some of the things that both of you know, at least from your personal experience or others around you, that kind of shift the blame, right? The, the, the things that we kind of use as excuses to change a habit, to change a lifestyle. So, um, yeah, either one. Well, I know when I first started transitioning into a healthier lifestyle, I had to admit to myself that like I needed to make a change and I had to stop 
making excuses about why, like, oh, I can eat it tomorrow, or, like, there's certain times that I might, you know, blame it on, and schedules, but once you become honest with yourself and really understand that you need to lose weight and it's your, you know, it's well, everything's your choice, then it becomes easier and it becomes, starts a path to go on, or you can just go and succeed. Mm-hmm. And for you, at what, what what were some of the things that you kept blaming your weight on? Yeah, I think, on? Uh, to be honest, at first I had to, um, I blame my job. You know, oh, it's too much stress, not enough time. You know, everyone thinks that, you know, you're supposed to eat less and work out more. Um, and you think it'd be that simple. But for me, I just, I think I didn't care. I thought one day I'll do it, you know. And growing up, getting used to being overweight, I, I just didn't ever really think of it. You know, I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I have, I'm pretty smart, I have a good job. I'll get to it one day. And I think a lot of it was just feeling like it wasn't that valuable and it wasn't that important. And in some sense, I was lying to myself about that. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing I, I think that is important to notice is that in our culture, being um, Latinos and growing up in a, in a Latino culture, there's to some degree th an acceptable overweight factor, right? Yeah, I mean, even for, even for men, right? Yeah. It's kind of okay. Like, the gorditos don't look so yeah, bad. I mean, panza, the, right? Well, yeah, okay. And then, and even just, right, when you think of, of teen interaction and, you know, kids are, are out there playing, let's say, soccer, football, like a lot of the guys are out there being active, and then the girls just kind of go watch. So we have kind of our patterns of behavior, either affected by our culture, our um, environments in school. So, and I find those things interesting because they, they influence a lot about how we live. So um, I know for you, you were, you were talking to me about how you're in your high school. There's a lot of consciousness about how people look and feel. People are very kind of like physically fit. But what I want to get at is what are, what are those? Those are kind of external factors. Tell me about the, those external things that kind of keep us wanting to live well, to physically, to be physically fit. Right. Well, I mean, a lot of it is social and a lot of it, you know, it's mainly just what you view and what you might know. Like some people don't even, they might know that, they might not know that they're eating something unhealthy and they might not know that what they're doing can be bad for them. And it takes time to, I think, you need to think about yourself and really try to feel and become in tune with your body and understand what what is making you, you know, unhealthy and gaining weight. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's it. For you, Ed, what, what are some of those the external, external factors? I think factors. habits of family. I mean, yeah. when we think about the Latino tradition, I mean, what I learned to eat, I learned to eat from my parents and from my parents' get-togethers and gatherings. And whether it was, you know, uh, an awesome Puerto Rican dish, you know, or a New Year's party or Christmas party, you always had a great, you know, carne or asada or something, but then you'd always have arroz con something. Oh, everything. And usually that arroz con something is also going to be, you know, and what I've learned about carbohydrates and all those things, and you just kind of thought that was it. And my parents loved me with their food. I mean, that's how we show in Latino culture, I think. Yeah. We, we express our love through social gatherings, and we express it through food, you know. And it's a wonderful thing. And however, if that food becomes part of an emotional connection, you may not ever realize that. You know? That's exactly right. Um, you know, I, we, we've touched on a number of points that I want to kind of dig deeper as we go into the next segment, because one thing is, yes, you know, how you, you make decisions, right, based on something. It, it may be based on how you feel, um, your emotional connection to food, um, that cultural component, right? We wouldn't want to offend mommy or papi right. or abuelita, right, right, that they cook, they spend so much time kitchen, on that, yeah. you know, nice greasy, uh, you know, pork or whatever yeah. it may be. And, and yet, you know, the, each one of those decisions adds up, and they add up to how we are today, right? What makes us how we feel. Yeah. And it's those, those things that we, we just don't think about, and we don't spend time thinking about them. And other things, we don't think about um, what we believe about the food, right? I mean, most of us just kind of look at food and think it, it's going to taste good or it's not going to taste good. And that's how we judge, right, what we right. eat. But um, if we thought, okay, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, these decisions now are kind of making up a story about how I am as a person, what I believe about what I, what I eat. And 
in a, in a way, we are what we eat, right? Yeah, completely. So, um, so we'll be right back uh, as we continue discussing the, not, not, not just an issue of over, being overweight, but we're talking about habits that build to a lifestyle, uh, a lifestyle that is of well-being and loving oneself. So stick with us and also uh, come back because we're going to talk about some real easy steps that we can take today, tomorrow to change those habits and actually build to something good. We'll be back. When your kids eat healthy and get active, <laughs> it'll help make their dreams come true. Be our guest to healthy living today at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Generación Latina and we're talking about health, living well, staying physically active and fit. And you know, this this can be just such a daunting task, but we're we're trying to boil it down to what, you know, just a very simple, you know, small baby steps that you can take. And these things can actually make a world of a difference. So with us uh, back here is Nico and Eduardo. Nico, what was the change for you? You told me you lost 45 pounds in a matter of three months. You look and feel great. Um, so what, how did you change? What, what steps, specific things did you actually do? Well, I started getting more natural foods and foods that I liked that were also healthy. I started researching foods that I could eat that were, you know, delicious but also good for me. So I started making the green smoothies and other smoothies I'd have for breakfast that filled me up and they were good. And you and know what? Let me tell you, a green smoothie does not sound appealing at all. When I first got it, it looked weird and it <laughs> smelled kind of weird, but then I drank it and I heard what was in it and it didn't sound like it would be good at all, but... And I drank it, and it was really good. It's actually delicious. Okay. So, well, you're going to give us that recipe later, right? Yeah, I Okay. Will. All right, good. Um, so the green smoothies, and then I go to farmer's markets. And with my mom, we go to farmer's markets, and we just look at all the different foods and fruits and leaves and green food that, that is actually good. You can find some good stuff there. And I started going into stores and found, like, gluten-free pretzels and gluten-free snacks and started eating gluten-free pizza, they had that, so it's just, I mean, you can find stuff that's good for you. That's no, good. it's really good that's um, gluten-free, and I just found out it's a, it's a cereal, it's like a Chex, Chex yeah. mix cereal. I had no idea that thing, w and I love it, yeah. you know? Yeah, what I do is actually, like, I'll have these, these pretzels are better than normal any pretzels, so I'll <laughs> eat them, and then my, I'll give them to my friends, and I'll be like, they're like, wow, this is amazing, I'll be like, yeah, they're gluten-free too. Yeah. So they'll be like, oh, cool. So, I mean, there's stuff that's really good that's healthy for you. Yeah. So in a sense, it was kind of like just learning what was out there. Like you didn't know. Right. And and now you did go to Hawaii. Pretty cool. All right. And you got you you were surrounded by a lot of great natural food. But then you come back to this environment right here in this local area, and you've you're kind of back into I guess back with what you were eating to begin with. So what kept you from just choosing those things all over again and gaining back the weight? Yeah. Well. When I came back, I, you know, I felt good, and I was, in a sense, enlightened with this new information I had about the good food. So when we had friends go to Chipotle, I'd, I'd get a burrito bowl instead of a burrito with a tortilla, so I'd eliminate the wheat, and you know, those are still very good. And I started going to stores and buying these gluten-free pretzels and the pizza, and because like, I knew how I felt when I ate good, it, just, cause it was just kind of natural for me to you know, go looking for these good foods. Yeah, it wasn't... It stop becoming like a chore like oh this is good for me i better do this it was like i want this yeah but it became a lifestyle right so. eduardo uh for you kind of like bring it bring it all together for us i know for both of you it's been somewhat similar but you know kind of like what it, if you break it down into the basics right, right what does it take to change well it's interesting I mean, first of all i like what nico said it reminds me a lot of like and this is why i'm doing this now i mean there's just the childhood obesity in our communities is so Big and it, the, 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 the rates are, are just increasing beyond any other um, community that exists here in the States. And so I think the first thing is I really had to be honest with myself. I mean, I've been overweight most of my life. And I had forgotten what it felt like to like be picked last on a team, perhaps, or to not feel so comfortable taking off my shirt when everyone's going to the beach. So I think really, it, it, from what Nico said, it's really being honest, like not just like really with myself. How much does it mean? How much has it maybe affected choices that I that I've made or not made in the past? Um, and how much is it affecting my future? You know, how do people see me? So I think that was the first thing. Um, the second thing is I really became aware. I became, I trained myself to understand what is it that I didn't know about food? 
Why is it that when I think I eat less, I still could gain weight? And a lot of it had to do with understanding the difference between proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. You know, it's funny now thinking about Chipotle and, all, and places like that. I go to Chipotle regularly, and I'm able to create a meal that's completely healthy for my body and that doesn't do a lot to, like, um, to drain my energy. Okay, uh, and this is great. Actually, I do want to hear how you do this. Yeah. Because at Chipotle, I mean, there's... There's a lot of good stuff, there's a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, there, well, so a lot of it happens to be kind of getting aware that there, so I read a book called Mindless Eating. I read a, a couple of other books about, you know, that explain the difference between proteins, fats, and carbs. And what I didn't know was carbohydrates can become fat in the body. It's very natural for a carbohydrate to, to turn into fat when insulin gets, like, in, so I don't want to get too technical, right? <laughs> but what's interesting to know is that since I was a kid, I've been eating a lot of carbohydrates. You know, a cheeseburger is great, but when you add french fries to it, now you've literally taken a saturated fat and you've added some carbohydrates. And so at Chipotle, one of the things I do is I just take away any of the carbohydrates that would make my body feel a little bit tired. So I take away the tortilla, I take away the rice, and sometimes I'll, I'll leave the beans, it really just depends. Um, but it's just a really neat like salad bowl experience. And I'll actually create the burrito bowl. I'll have the tortilla, but I'll have them put a little bit more salad in there. And at the end, I actually end up not eating the tortilla. And people are usually surprised, you know. <laughs> so I, I hopefully I'm not wasting too much. But, um, but I think that was it, being aware, mm -hmm. like really getting mm -hmm. to know. Um, I actually just had a burrito bowl. Yeah? Yeah. Was it good? It was good. Was it? Yeah. Well, adding spice and condiments, I don't know if you like spicy, yeah, you but... a little Tabasco in there. Yeah, yeah, and that actually adds flavor. And I think that's the other thing I learned. I learned a lot about different food combinations. Um, and then finally, I think one of the things you said is you just have to make it a, a, a lifestyle change. And so I would say, you know, being honest, being aware, becoming aware, and finally taking an action, being in action about, like, what can I do, right, to make a difference in my life? And who can I actually help or enroll around me mm -hmm. to help me? And so after having coached 50 or 60 people, I know that every pound um, that I've gained, every pound is, is just physical. Sometimes, like I said before, there's an emotional component to it. Mm -hmm. And kind of getting really you know, honest with yourself, aware about why that came from, and then finding some new habits, some new foods, some new lifestyle changes. Cool. So you were telling me that in order to change my lifestyle, I don't have to start going to the gym tomorrow for an hour. Right. I mean, that's right. that's what we're and, and and if you break it down, right, as you were saying, like it's about being honest, okay, telling others, acknowledging that you know what it, you are a little overweight. You're, you may not you may not even be necessarily overweight, but you go to the doctor and you find out that you've got you're you're close to getting high cholesterol because that happens, right. right? Some people do not look overweight and they have high cholesterol because of just what they eat. Right. Um, so being honest, right? Be aware and be in action. What is, what is for you, I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, I know you do a lot of things um, which are really cool. You run marathons, you, I see you drinking smoothies and cool drinks all the time. Um, so what is one thing that our audience can do tonight or even tomorrow morning that they can do to change their life? Yeah, well, uh, I would say one thing uh, I started doing is I discovered um, a little workout that's called um, Tabata. It's named after a Japanese doctor, Dr. You know, Tabata. And basically, it talks about the Tabata timers and these little apps you can download. And it's a four-minute workout, which basically is on, around the concept of high-intensity interval training. So in four minutes every day, like who doesn't have four minutes? Um, you, I do a little workout, and it's 20 seconds of something. It could be something as simple as a squat. You know, um, you can go to the airport and, you know, do, <laughs> do a squat in front. You can do jumping jacks if you want, a quick push-up or something like that. But 20 seconds, then 10 seconds of rest, another 20 seconds of some other activity. You do that for four minutes, and eventually what you start realizing is that four minutes becomes eight, it becomes 12, and all of a sudden you might be finding yourself going to the gym and such. And for an adult hmm. who has lots of excuses about time and effort and work and such, you know, it, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Nico, for you. All right, let's talk about this green smoothie because yeah. I, I, don't, I don't buy this yet. <laughs> you might have to make it for me before I, I actually believe you. But what do you put in it? Well, I start off with juice, put juice in it, orange juice usually. Um, orange juice and then just whatever fruits I like. I usually get like bags of frozen fruits. So I can put strawberries in there, mangoes, pineapple, peaches, any fruit you like. And I'll get, you know, also fresh fruit like strawberries. And we'll usually get some greens and then I'll put kale and... 
just any like just kind of green like you can put anything like, I put celery in there sometimes but you have to put other things to balance it out if you put too much mm -hmm. vegetables it might not taste good but just find a good balance you know it takes a couple to get it right a good texture you usually get like an inch of juice will get a good texture in there and then agave nectar which is mm. it's a it's like a different more natural type of honey and that's also really good gets a nice sweet flavor in there so I put no sugar or nothing just agave nectar and juice will make it really sweet also with the fruits it makes it delicious and then whatever kind of vegetables you put in it, that's what makes it green. And it's, it's awesome, honestly. I okay. like it. So I'll, I'll make you one and see if... All right. <laughs> if, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll give it a try. And you, well, I mean, you've started this. Like, you've got a little trend going. It's cool, too, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, like, I started making them when I got back from Hawaii. And then I'd go to my friend's house. They'd be like, oh, you want a smoothie? And they'll make smoothies at their houses. So it's, cool. yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay. I'll have to do it. And we'll go to, like, Robex sometimes instead of McDonald's. We'll, like, go to Robex to get a smoothie. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah, the choices, I mean, it's really just about the small choices, right, taking small steps. So, Nico, I, I'm sorry, Ed, you were going to say something. Yeah, no, I think that what Nico said reminded me also, I think in our community there's a, a real common misperception that it's expensive to eat healthy. Yes. You know, and I think one of the things I've realized is that it doesn't have to be. And you don't have to eat, you know, every vegetable in order to do that. I've learned how to eat spinach. I love spinach. And it's so funny, as a kid, you watch Popeye and such, and you think, yeah, I don't, but it's amazing the kinds of things that you, you know, and the, the taste that I think I thought was part of a real a mental or emotional, you know, connection for me. So I still actually don't eat broccoli. I'm not a great fan. However, I've found ways uh, to actually have, like, like what Nico was talking about, to find ways to really get those kinds of vegetables, even if it's like with supplements, even if it's you know by going to the store and finding like a green, like what's that called? Uh, they're like the green foods, you know, the uh, superfoods, and you super mix foods. that into a shake, mix that into a salad dressing, um, and then also, you know, as an adult, you know, with with kid, you know, with kids, sometimes it'd be great to just have those habits for your kids, you yep. know. Yep. and build them you know, from the beginning. Not everything has to taste sugary. Right, right. right. What's the, uh, sorry, before, because we have a little bit of time, that's just what is the most important thing that you want to leave our audience with? Um, I think it's to know that change comes within you. That if you want to make a change, it's no matter what your situation is, if you can change your mindset and the way you feel, then that's how you can create the change. And once you start, feeling good and if you do make a change then it won't become hard. It's hard for a little bit but once you really start make the change and you, you will feel good and it won't become hard and it won't become a chore and eating healthy will become normal and then eating something unhealthy will become abnormal and it won't become just like a weird thing. It'll just become your lifestyle and you will feel good. And I like it. In a, the way I see it is like going uphill in a mountain. It's so hard. Once you get up there and you see how amazing it is, yeah. how great it feels, where else can you go? Only downhill and it's easy, right? right? And so that's, you can kind of build a lifestyle around that. Right. Ed, for you, what's the most important thing? Yeah, I think for me, one of the most important things is realizing that I actually had a choice. That it was my responsibility that at any point in my life, I could actually say, you know what, I want to change this now. And I think as a little kid, I just, I kept making excuses thinking it wasn't that important. You know, uh, I had other areas of my life that were just fine. Um, but I think one of the biggest things for me, and this is why I'm so passionate about now sharing this with others, and this is why I know we started talking about it, because it's just been amazing to think that, like, someone who didn't become a doctor, who didn't major in nutrition, um, is now, has like, I've helped 50 or 60 people lose anywhere between 10 pounds or, like, 80, 85 pounds. And um, I think knowing that there's a choice, that everyone has a choice, and all it takes is a little bit of education, maybe a little bit of action, and maybe a little community and a plan, um, anything's possible. Awesome. You heard it here on Generación Latina, you know, tell, um, actually, be, be honest with yourself, be aware of what you're eating, and be in action. Take small steps. Uh, more on this and that green smoothie recipe is definitely going to be on generacionlatina.org. So stick with us, find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, and we will be back next week with more of this. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.